Could I have pulled it more? What do you think? This is just under two pounds and I'm gonna see how tall I can throw it. I'm Molly Sanyor. I've actually partnered with Speedball Bats to bring out these black Molly Sanyor ceramic Speedball Bats, which I love to throw on. That way, when you're done, you can just take the bat off instead of having to put your fingers in the whole pot. So first, I'm gonna slam my clay down, I turn my wheel back on, and give it some downward pressure to make sure that that clay is stuck on the wheel. <clears throat> See, I kind of didn't tap it enough, so I gotta make sure it's wedged on there. Because once you get water between your clay and the plastic, it is just gonna wanna slide around. So you gotta resection it on there. I could just take it off and dry it off. That would be a good idea. And then you want to keep a cone shape. You want to get rid of this flat top and hold it. Rotate, rotate, rotate. And then again, you're right now just trying to create this cone shape where it's wider at the bottom, skinnier at the top. My left hand is supporting the clay from wobbling down, giving pressure from my palm to the thumb, while the right hand is holding a clean, wrung out sponge that has some water in it. So as I need it, I can add it and the clay won't get stuck in my hand. I'm gonna go ahead and leverage my right hand to the left hand because the left hand is anchored in my hip. And then I can just squeeze my right fingertips into that anchored left palm. Supporting the clay the whole way up, letting it rotate where I feel inconsistencies getting all the way to the top. Hold it, let the clay rotate, 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 and then slow release. So once you see some horizontal smooth lines in your clay, you know it's pretty much ready to push down to center. So you would ideally cone up and down until you get rid of all those lumps and bumps. You can actually see a little inconsistency right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and push to center. My left palm is gonna lean on that clay. The right hand is gonna karate chop the center, pressing down with a flat surface. My hand is opened up and I'm connected to that boss hand. I'm hugging that thumb, opening my hand and leaning onto this clay, squeezing water as I need it to create this kind of hockey puck, kind of low round cake form. And just hold yourself there, rotate, rotate, rotate slow release once it feels smooth then we've got to open the clay so again the boss centered anchored hand is connected to my body into the clay i'm making a straight line through the center with my forearm hands are connected right fingertip drills down and for this form oh i kind of went through the bottom because i forgot it wasn't making my trees we're going to open up and i'm going to go ahead and pull back uh, i should have left the bottom but i didn't so right now what I'm doing is my left hand is leaning on that clay. My right fingertip is gliding up along the inside of that hand and my left thumb is creating contact on the top. And I'm just gonna hold it and let it rotate, 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 squeezing water from the sponge as I need it. Okay, the next step to getting the height is squeezing from the bottom to the top, again, creating that kind of gradual transition. So pressure down against the bat leaning at the base of the clay, let it rotate. Then my outside hand can come up, let it rotate, come up, let it rotate, come up, let it rotate. And what's happening is my inside hand is down against the clay from the inside. So this hand's pressing against that hand, holding it here, a vertical support on the inside, fingers pressing there, fingers pressing here against that vertical support on the inside. Hands are always connected, water as you need it. Again, you try to start at the base, Rotate, if it feels like it got really thin right here, then relax the pressure there because your mission right now is to create a continuous thickness from the bottom to the top. Look at this little finger compressing the lid all at one time. Rotate, rotate, rotate. So I have pressure here, pressure there, pressure there at the top. Rotate, rotate. If we slice this in half now, it should be thicker and gradually get thinner. I'm gonna stick my whole hand down in there and squeeze this clay at the base. Again, my inside hand is still at the bottom. My outside hand is coming up along that inside hand, connecting my fingers as soon as I can, and then letting these outside fingers kind of press into the pressure of that inside hand, get to the top, hold that lip, let all that pressure, just hold it and rotate, rotate, rotate. If you get a thin spot, which I can kind of see is happening right here, I can just put my finger vertical along that on the inside and take all four fingers and just hold it there, elbows against my body right there and just let it rotate, rotate, rotate. There's some inconsistency right there. So that helps strengthen it back up. So you can see I'm containing the form to get my height. As soon as the walls go out wide, you lose your vertical. So again, I'm gonna tuck this arm down in there, press down against the bat, squeeze this clay from the base into that inside hand. The inside hand is establishing that 90 degree transition. And then once you feel that clay start to move between your fingers, they can come up together being aware of your thickness of clay. 
when you feel like you're in control, the speed can help as you kind of whip it through those fingers and let it rotate. Compress that lip, rotate, rotate, rotate. Now as you're coming up, it's the right hand's job to now be in control and to be the boss. When you're centering, that left hand had to be anchored in your hip socket, but as you're pulling, it's the right hand's job to prevent any inconsistencies or wobbles. So this right hand is anchored against my body. I'm currently pressing against the inside hand, thinking about do I have that 90 degree transition. I'm squeezing the thickness. My inside hand has not come up. The outside fingertips are running along that, that index finger that's pointing downwards with my inside left hand. And here, I'm gonna relax my pressure. I can feel it's gotten thinner. I'm gonna connect as soon as possible, allowing the outside right hand to be the boss and control that clay to come up instead of allowing that inside hand to be outward pressured. Right now, we are currently at six inches. And we're gonna see if we can do one more pull. This piece started at two pounds, just under two pounds. All right, now this last trick, what's gonna happen is the right hand's gonna start at the bat. This right hand's actually gonna come above that inside hand, stretch the clay outwards, and then allow this outside hand to scoop back under it and come up together patiently. Making sure that we're patient for that clay to rotate, rotate, rotate. So look at that, the inside hand's up. It's now stretching that clay up slightly. The outside right hand is anchored in my hip. As soon as I can connect that inside hand to the outside hand, I do. The outside hand is the boss. The inside hand is just supporting at the top right fingertip or left fingertip will compress, compress, compress. Slow release. All right, let's see what that little stretch pull did for us. Okay, six and a half. So we got a half an inch. Should we do one more? Kind of want to do one more. Let's do one more. I think we can do it. So I'm gonna add a little water between my outside hand and the pot. I just add a little water so that the inside stays dry. Squeeze out my sponge, starting at the bottom. You can use your knuckle, you can use your finger, you can use three fingers, one finger, whatever works for you, but you don't wanna get under it. You wanna get under it and push that clay back up. So you wanna keep that pressure supported along the wall instead of getting under it, which can cause it to wave off of it. So inside hand's gonna go down vertically. Let it rotate, rotate. Outside hand's the boss. Inside hand's gonna stretch that clay. My inside hand also has to be concerned and thoughtful about not expanding outwards along the inside of the wall. Okay. Letting that outside hand be the boss. Inside hand is holding steady all the way to the top. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Slow release. It's actually a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be. We're at seven inches. So, you know what I think? One more pull. I'll add a little water to the outside. Inside hand, I might just you know, make sure it's not dry. Down. All right, let's really stretch this clay. Inside hand is stretching out. Now, if you're too aggressive, you can cause a thin spot, which will represent a weakness and could cause that clay to collapse. So actually, I see one happening. I'm gonna slow release. I'm gonna address this little issue right here. I'm gonna go back down, inside hands vertical, outside fingertips will be horizontal, and we're just gonna let it rotate, rotate, rotate until it feels strengthened up again. Just a thin spot, pull too much, gotta watch my pressure. So up here it's a little thicker, down there it's thinner. So now we can finish that pull. Clean out my sponge, add a little water. Okay, so I'm gonna start up again here. I'm already high enough where my inside hand can connect to that outside hand. That outside hand is pushing up under the inside hand. You know, I find that sometimes speed is my friend and sometimes slowness is my friend. So just whatever you're kind of feeling. Okay, let's see what that one gave us. We are at seven and a half inches. Okay. Let's do it again. Let's just do it until we collapse it, huh? Add a little water. Fingertips point down. Try not to let the inside hand press out too wide because width takes away from our vertical height. Okay, let it rotate, rotate. I see that thin spot right there. So I'd probably want to address that right now. Reach in, rotate, rotate, rotate. Rotate, rotate, rotate. As many times as it takes, it will smooth itself out if you are patient. 
Inside hands vertically, right fingertips are horizontally against it. Just kind of supporting that form vertically. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Okay, when it feels back on track, I've gotta be careful because it's thin there. Okay, we're gonna pick back up there. Inside hands vertical. Outside hand, I'm gonna put my fingertips over this wet sponge, starting just about where I had control. And what's happening is this hand's just underneath this finger. And I'm gonna come up together like that. So this hand's there. Inside hand's going just above. Look at my thumbs are connected and working together. My pace is in control, patient, because I have that thin spot at the bottom that if I catch a dry spot or I mess up my pressure, it could just tear, put a twist in it. Okay, measure again. Just under eight. Just under eight. I mean, I've gotta go again. All right, one aggressive pull. An aggressive pull. I'm telling that to myself, because look, I've been too easy. I mean, I've already kind of stretched it to its limit, so we might as well see if I can stretch it more. Now this clay has no grog. Grog helps strengthen the clay up. And I have been adding a lot of water, which makes it soft, more plastic. Okay, here we go. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Worst case, you rip through it. Squeeze it. All right, it's a little wonky down there, but let's just see. Last one. Hope that this little cylinder project helped. This was two, two pounds, just under two pounds, and we got it to about eight inches. So what I can do is put a rib on it, straighten this up. Rib is being held in my right boss anchored hand. Inside fingertip is sliding up along that rib. And then up here, where it kind of goes out a little wider, I'm allowing my outside hand to be the boss. Up here, allowing that inside hand, connecting as soon as possible to the rib with my inside thumb. And then we can slice it in half. I remember this had no bottom. Let's see. Walls are looking like. So there we go. Could I have pulled it more? What do you think?